I want to chat to you today about some documents I recently received from CSIS concerning last year's Danforth shooting. At the time it was a story that people had a lot of questions about. It captured the national imagination. Why did this happen? Everyone wanted to know. And right in the immediate aftermath of the incident, there was quite a cone of silence around it. A lot of questions not being answered, denials or refusals to answer by national security officials, by Toronto police on the ground, and people just said, come on, just, just answer these questions. Now, there's been a lot of speculation, even conspiracy theories throughout all of this, and, and I always obtained, look, law enforcement, whether it's in this story or any other story that comes around, they should tell us as much as possible, maximum disclosure right out of the gate because otherwise human nature abhors a vacuum and people are going to start to speculate and ask, well, what is going on here? Well, I have new documents from CSIS that show that they took a six-month interest in the case. So they have various reports and correspondence dating from the very morning right away after it happened, 7 a.m. Uh, the next day following that evening attack, dating all the way until December. Six months of heavily redacted documents. And by heavily redacted, I mean, as you can see in some of these pages, there's very little information that's, that's actually on these pages. But what they give you is a sense that there's dates and timestamps, and yes, they were talking to each other. Some of these documents are classified top secret for Canadian eyes only. And you can tell sort of the general gist that there were situation reports being compiled, there were meetings being had, but you don't know what was discussed in those meetings, what was found in all of those reports. So what is noteworthy about this and, and what can we say from it? Well, there's not a lot we can say from it, but what is interesting is at the time, Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale's office was asked, hey, is CSIS involved in this in any way? Now, they had said there's no national security nexus to this at all. Uh, they remained firm about this. And everything we have out there, uh, facts about this case, suggests that that is an accurate statement. And then they were asked, hey, is CSIS involved? And they would not confirm. They wouldn't say yes or say no. Kind of very odd. Because look, if they're involved, just say, yeah, they're doing routine stuff. It's unclear from these documents, and I've spoken to a few people in intelligence circles, whether or not this means this was a routine thing. Natural protocol, you see a guy doing a shooting and you go, okay, well, let's get CSIS involved. Because there are shootings all the time and we know there's sort of local gangs and so forth and CSIS does not at all get involved in them. There's no documentation, nothing's gonna show up. So this confirms for the first time CSIS did have some interest in looking into this. The only sort of specifics we know from the information that was not redacted is that uh, they sought atmospherics on the shooting. Can't really tell you any more about what that means. Basically, you know, specifics about, about the actual moments when the shooting went down and also that they were running checks, whatever that means. Presumably some sort of checks on Faisal Hussein and backstory in him and so forth. He, of course, is the deceased shooter, one of three, not one of three shooters, other two deceased were tragically the victims, Juliana Kozis, Henry Fallon, and 13 other people in Toronto, unfortunately, wounded by this shooting. So a small snapshot into how responses to all of this unfolds and just a little window into answering some more questions about one little question, one little issue that, I don't know, Ralph Goodall maybe could have just answered at the time, the former public safety minister, and stopped there being this other window of people asking further questions. So we don't know exactly uh, what CSIS found, what they were doing. Seems like they wrapped things up after six months and the most amount of their action was in the days immediately following, which seems to be typical protocol here. Although it is interesting, as I noted in the write-up reports I had done on this, that they certainly dragged their feet in releasing these documents. They went through all their, you know, running the clock they could to beat the traditional rules and access to information laws. And they cited many, half a dozen provisions in the Access to Information Act as to why they should be disclosing a lot of this material. So there's also stuff that they have that I just did just not get. So there you go, a small little snapshot and window into one new kind of angle of the way people are still asking some questions about this stand for shooting, getting a lot of the particulars. But as the Toronto Police Service report that was released uh, not, too, not too long ago, a number of months ago, this calendar year, a year after it had taken place, they said they've looked everywhere to find things about motive, to find whether there are other people involved, and they just say no. There's really nothing we know about this to this date. It seems like this was just one guy 
acting alone. They found the 9-11 conspiracy videos in his apartment. That was kind of news. Found another couple sketchy things to suggest we had an oddball here, but still, those questions kind of remain. What is the motive still to this day? The families ask, and still there is no answer.